At one point or another, we've all looked upon these waddling fucks and thought, how in the name of holy Jesus are you alive? Now that would be an accurate thought. Just looking at them makes me feel a sense of pain usually reserved for pictures of burn victims. Misshapen lumps of flesh, the centaurs are a mysterious creature. Their origin is a sad one. It involved that slaked shit the master, which shouldn't be surprising. The cunt has been involved in half of the fucked up abominations that now roam America. So let's find out a bit about them. Now at first glance they appear humanoid, as they have a big ugly human mug. You're probably wondering if they were human, how did they mutate into this? Most humans, when exposed to radiation or the forced evolutionary virus, turn into ghouls or super mutants. So how did this thing mutate and what did it mutate from? Well, it was FEV that caused the mutation. As for what they mutated from, well, that's where things get just a little bit complicated. The idea was to take a human and stick them in a vat of FEV, much like with the super mutants. But then, one day, an idea was had. What if we stick other shit in there as well? What would happen then? Uh, well, as it turns out, uh, nothing good at all. Humans were tossed into vats with dogs and several other animals as well, like cats. And the virus set to work, resulting in the fucked up creature that we see today. It also explains the name, as a centaur was a creature that was horse down from the waist down, and human from the waist up. Which sort of applies in this case, if it was a human that looked like a ball sack. So what is the deciding factor in what they look like and their abilities? as there are two primary known types to us. Now since I have no footage of them, I won't talk about them for long. Suffice to say, the centaurs found in New California had a lot more tentacles and a canine head to accompany the human one. The canine head also attacked the human one, so they were aware of each other. Fucking weird. But that is something they share in common with the one-headed centaur that many are familiar with. The human head is present in both. This suggests that the human part may have enough traits that the FEV will always choose to include it in the resultant creature. It is also worth noting that the centaurs found in the capital wasteland, the one-headed variant, and then the Mojave, were most likely created in Vault 87. This suggests that the difference between two types is due to a possible lack of dogs in the capital wasteland, resulting in the two-headed variety not appearing. The average centaur has six legs, that really creepily end in human hands, some of which seem to be bent the wrong angle. The torso seems to have what appears to be bone-like protrusions sticking out of it, or possibly enamel, such as teeth. The protrusions seem to be placed in such a way that they could be the result of an extra set of ribs growing out through the skin. Which is fucking minging. Their skin is wrinkly and their veins are extremely prominent throughout their body. They really do like, like a scrotum with legs, don't they? The bones of the spine also protrude through the skin. Beginning to see a pattern here. What appears to be the beginning of arms growing out of the torso, and what appears to be the shoulder blade. Now I don't know why this is the case, as the lower half has no problem making six fully functioning arms. Their face looks to be permanently depressed. The eyes are either non-existent, or so sunken into their heads that they would not be of much use anyway. They have three tentacles slash tongues coming out of their mouths. Due to the presence of these, I doubt they have teeth. Now because of these tongues, I think the absence of eyes is much more likely than them just being sunken. Centaurs have quite high perception. I think the tongues work in much the same way as a snake flicking its tongue does. The three tongues allow them to taste the air and detect the presence of prey, even with no eyes and no obvious ears. The tongues are quite durable as well, as when engaging in close quarters combat, they will whip the bejesus out of any prey that gets near them. They also spit a toxic substance at you. And they do so with some sorcerer's level of accuracy. These wads of spit, as I believe it is accurate to describe them as such, do not do much damage. However, they do increase the player's radiation level, which I find quite odd. The reason I find it odd is that they themselves are not radioactive, and normally radiation would easily penetrate their skin and muscle. The spit is also capable of igniting gas, but I can't think of any reason why. They definitely like radiation and can frequently be found near highly irradiated areas. This is seen most prominently in the Mojave where we encounter evolved centaurs. They appear similarly to ordinary centaurs, but they have a vast amount of what appear to be growths or tumours running down their backs. It is unknown whether these are cancerous, but since evolved centaurs are the result of exposure to radiation, it would make sense. They also seem to have a slightly increased muscle mass as well. 
Intelligence is the oddest topic with these creatures. Throughout Fallout 3 and New Vegas, it is quite obvious they are allied with the super mutants. This could be instinctual, possibly the centaur sensing that, like them, the super mutants are the result of the FEV, and as a result choose to follow them. It might also be due to the fact that both species were, at one point, human. Though for the centaurs, they are further removed than the super mutants, and they consider them allies because of this. They seem to take up an almost watchdog-like role, and can often be found at company super mutants on patrols. They do have higher perception than the super mutants, so this makes sense. They seem to be of relatively low intelligence. This can be assumed to be the result of degradation of the mind, or because of whatever they were mixed with. According to Moira Brown, the tongues may suggest an ability of speech, although we never see a demonstration of such. Tabitha states that they are kept as pets, further reinforcing the relationship of a watchdog with the super mutants. They seem to not possess the ability of speech or higher reasoning abilities, although they seem to possess the tools to do so. In the concept art for Fallout 3, a possible intelligence centaur can be seen. He looks like he's giving a riveting lecture on renaissance art and looks sophisticated as fuck, and has a comb over. Unfortunately, we never see this in the actual game, even though that would have been fucking awesome. So these are one of the saddest cunts to be found in the waste. The master had a hand in the creation of one type, and possibly humans in the creation of the other. As a result, their anatomy varies quite a bit, leading to some grotesque looking chops. Whether they appear more in Fallout 4 or not remains to be seen. But one thing is certain, they will still look like a ball sack. I hope you liked this episode about the most painful to look at creature in the waste and how it came to be. This episode will most likely be coming out around about when I hit 100,000 subscribers. So if that's the case, congratulations! We finally reached one fucker of a milestone and hopefully here is too many more. I promised you I will keep bringing you more and more content like this and I am covering Fallout 4. The Q&A video is coming, as well as a video on a certain interesting place in The Witcher 3, uh, but I'm starting placement quite soon and have some business to attend to next week. So, I, um, the video next week might be a little bit late. Apologies to that. But you know, can't really do anything about that. Sorry. If you did like this video, leave a like. I love reading your comments, so get them in there. Any suggestions for future content or videos you would like me to do are appreciated and welcome. If you want to help me grow, share this video on as many social media sites as you can, especially Reddit. Tell everybody. If you want to contact me regarding business, send me a private message here or on Twitter, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope to see you in my next episode, and until then, goodbye.